Carl and Liam here from Games, Brains and Headbang Life, GBHBL.com for sure. And it's getting goosebumps as we continue our trawl through season two. And if I'm honest, a section of episodes that just have so many forgettable ones. We are here again with one that I just generally thought was a waste of my time it is Attack of the Jack O' Lanterns, the 10th episode of season two. No way, man. This is going to be another one that we're going to have to probably disagree on. Ooh. Yeah, this is a very memorable episode, for, memorable episode for me. I remember it extremely well. And I'd say it's probably one of my favorite ones, to be honest. I will go into elaborate into why that is. But yeah, it's um, it's one of the ones that I really like. So Okay, okay, <laughs> it's like okay. Of, it's like Attack of the Mutant. We might have to disagree on this one. Yeah, interesting. All right. Well, it's the 48th yeah. book in the original Goosebump book series. Uh, oh. Published in 1996. I know I never read this one. I don't. I never got that far. 48. Yeah. <laughs> but William Fruitt is back directing. So we have that. And this time we have two writers because apparently this story was so fucking complicated to write. <laughs> we have Dan Angela and Billy Brown both with writing credits for this. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. This is a, a tri- this is a trip. I will say this is a very trippy episode in that you're like, what? What? What's yeah. happening now? Why is this yeah. happening? What? <laughs> <laughs> but it begins simply enough as we focus on a starry and moonful sky. Two kids are walking down the street the night before Halloween. It's a Halloween episode. The boy is called Walker, played by Aiden DeSalias, and the girl is called Drew, played by Erica Luttrell. I like these two. I think these are actually two solid, solid actors. Mm-hmm. She's really excited for Halloween. Him, not so much. He is worried as some people were apparently kidnapped from another town. But she isn't and manages them to get him into the idea of Halloween. She's basically super into Halloween. He's not. Her enthusiasm wins him over. We see, though, as there's goosebumps, they're being watched from the bushes by some sort of furry beast thing. Look, I'm already like, no, it's not. It's someone in a costume. I can't believe you're doing this. Well, aren't you nervous about going out? No! Not even a little? Walker, that was miles from here. They don't even know if anything bad happened to those people. Look, you know how much I love Halloween. Besides, who would want to kidnap us? <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> so, what are you going A superhero. They're mm-hmm. trying to decide what Walker should go out go as when they hear a beastly cry. And they're then startled by two kids who Drew apparently knows. This is Shane, Philip Edelis, and Shana on Andrea O'Rourke. God, mm-hmm. R.L. Stein loves this, where either the names rhyme or it's just a variation on the same. So you've got two siblings, Shane and Shana. And they're like... Well, literally, literally in Ghost Beach, one of the previous episodes, it was Jerry and Terry, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Shane yeah. and Shana. Yeah. <laughs> They say they're back in town for Halloween and they're introduced to Walker. So my initial thing was like, these two were like going to be bully characters. It actually turns out they're not. The friends Mm -hmm. of Drew who've just come back to spend Halloween. Mm -hmm. She invites them to come trick-or-treating with them. But now we get your cold opening, if you want to call it that, your fade to black moment as the beastly thing approaches and runs at the kids scaring them. And it's it's a group of other kids, bullies and masks. We have Lee, played by Gino Giacampamini and Tabitha played by Maria Palkin and apparently these two kids torment Drew every year yeah. mm-hmm. there's a lot of characters in this one I guess it was just the wind yeah you <laughs> Every time you are the world's biggest sucker, Drew. Yeah. Mm. But credit to everybody. I think they all stand out in their own way. Yeah. They leave after sharing some cutting words with Shane and Shana. Shana then tells Drew, look, we can help you get your own back on Lee and Tabitha. All you got to do is invite them out to come trick or treating with you. And, you know, we'll, 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 we'll scare them. Yeah. It's Goosebumps 101. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We then cut immediately to see Lee and Th- Tabitha being invited out to come trick-or-treating. Tabitha 
is suspicious. Now, one thing this episode does well is it cuts really, really smartly. So like, there's a good cut when we cut directly to them being invited. We do this great cut with Drew and Walker after getting off the phone, are like, yeah, they're going to come and they don't suspect a thing. And then immediately cut to Tabitha going to Lee. They're up to something. And I was like, that's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's all set. And guess what? They don't suspect a thing. Oh, great. I'm not sure what it is. Those two are up to something. We then get a baffling dream sequence. Now, I only knew it was a dream at first because we have a <laughs> dream dissolve. And I'm like, you know, I'm watching, I'm like, did they just dream dissolve? So are yeah. we doing a dream now? <laughs> so all the kids are trick-or-treating, but apparently uh, Shane and Shana never showed up. They go to a spooky old house and meet an old woman who insists they come up and show her sick husband their costumes. You get the idea. It's creepy as weird. She's so super like, go up, go up and see him. He'll love it. He's sick, but he'll love it. He'll love it, you know? Go up the stairs and see him. But she also does that thing where she then looks around like, out the door to make sure no one was watching. And you're like, oh, you're an evil old lady. Mm. She gets even more demanding and forces the kids up to a room where <laughs> it's just so fucking stupid. There were all <laughs> these kids in chains and like her husband is like, he, he's, he's, he's creepy and gross looking, but like, he just seems to have them in chains because he likes to look at the kids in their costumes because he sort of says. Mm. And it was like, it's so fucking weird. I loved it, man. I thought that was like, the idea of it is like super creepy. I love the whole dreamlike feel of it. That's what I like about it. Oh, I feel like it has a sort of dreamlike feel to it on the whole. And yeah, I just thought that whole thing with the old woman like being creepy. It's like, that's such a dark idea. Like kids getting like kidnapped at Halloween and taken in by this nice old woman and like, you know, luring them in and then like them all being in chains and stuff that's like such a dark idea i kind of wish that was like it wasn't it was in the dream you know i can imagine that again like if you were a young child watching that i remember this episode quite a lot and that's like a scary idea man you know but do you yeah. not agree that it's just padding that it doesn't exist for any reason beyond the pad this runtime yeah, but maybe it's to show that like as a child that's kind of the sort of thing that you would fear like they're happening if you were go if you were like gonna go because they're gonna go out trick-or-treating that's their plan to do that it's kind of like a natural fear you might have that especially because people it ties into the whole fact that people have been going missing recently so what's happened to them like yeah could it happen to them kind of thing i i, I like that i like yeah. that but my argument is simply put is that the behavior of the kids in the latter portion of this episode does not match up to the idea of fear of being kidnapped or anything like that it was because they're kids it's kind of like it's in the back of their mind like they're not really like showing it because they're kids they like sides are trick-or-treat by like deep in the back of their mind like the idea of potentially getting kidnapped you know i think that i think that's it man it was done cleverly it's clever writing <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Well, Drew does wake up and the next day it is Halloween and we do this quick sort of smash kind of fade where we go from day to night as kids are out trick or treating. I, I like it. I like visuals like that where it's a static camera on the same shot, but we go to night and people sort of fade in as it becomes like this is the time period. I, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. And um, there's a lot of like cool sets, I think, used in this, even though like most of them are on streets. Like um, I mentioned before in a previous episode, it was maybe the Haunted Mask. Just that I'm like really, I was always really jealous as a kid of how like ham America goes in Halloween, how like much everyone decorates the streets and their houses and stuff. Whereas in this country, everyone's just so like barely does it, you know, put like a jack o' lantern or something, but they go really hard for it over there and everyone's really into it and stuff. And it always made me a little bit jealous when I was a child, you know. I will agree with you. I know I'll agree with you with a later set that I was wowed yeah. by that. And if you played the game Costume Quest, that's yes. what jumped into my head. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Drew's mother. We then get a really long for goosebumps scene between Drew's mother, Drew's father, and Drew. Because Drew's mother doesn't want Drew going out because of all the missing people. Look, Drew obviously really wants to, so she's insisting. And then rather than side with his wife and be, you know, concerned about his daughter, he the father just basically calls out the mother. It's like, no, nah, she'll be fine. Let her go. She's gonna have some fun, that kind of thing, you know. I, I thought I, I I, I, it was fine, but I thought, man, the moment that door closed, she was like, you prick. 
yeah, I thought it was pretty crazy that the parents were sending out the kids at all, considering um, four people have literally gone missing very recently. I know they mention, they make a point of saying that it's the town over, so no big deal kind of thing. But I wouldn't be sending my kids out like four people. That's like quite a few <laughs> to go missing, you know. But also the town over is close. Like, that shit's yeah. close. If she'd said a different state, mm. but town over, that could be a mile and a half away. Exactly. I mean, yeah, I thought that was a bit ridiculous. And like you said, I'm sure the mother did not appreciate the way the father acted in that situation. Yeah, it did, it did make me laugh. We do in between this also see like something with claws, like lobster style claws, holding a mm. newspaper article about the four missing people. Drew does insist she goes out. A father helps her to get out and a mother relents as Walker arrives. And I don't know, I guess this is supposed to be funny, but I do like the character of Walker. So I like his character in this, so I forgive it. But he's dressed like he's in a matrix, basically. But then says he's dressed as a dark and stormy knight. <laughs> and I, I kind of like, like, okay, what is that? And oh, what does he do? I forgot what he does. Oh, he squirts um, a water gun. He's, uh, the father says... I get the dark, but where's the stormy? And then he like squirts the water gun at him. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I didn't mind it. I thought, well, that's using your imagination, kid. Yeah. But yeah, they leave, they leave on the insistence. Look, we're going to be really careful. You know, we're going to be like smart kids and stuff like that, which they're not, but like they do it initially, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They then meet up with Lee and Tabitha, but Shane and Shana are nowhere to be seen. Ooh, is it the dream that she had? Ooh. <laughs> Shana tells Shane, as the, um, as the others are approaching, she knows they're planning something and they will get to them first. So I'm like, yep, yeah, I, I would be suspicious too. Mm -hmm. Shana then shows Shane the missing people article and it seems to be like they're going to use that angle to scare them. We keep cutting to something during this, moving through the woods. And you've got this like super, super big spotlight for like moonlight in the woods. It's a good look. It's all right. Yeah. Shane and Shana then talk about the missing people while trying to freak out Drew. They head off. But Walker is worried about Shane and Shana. In the woods, they end up walking into a sort of wooded area that's kind of off the beaten path. And they run into a pair wearing pumpkins on their heads who jump out of them and scare everyone. But Lee and Tabitha are totally unimpressed, believing these two to be Shane and Shana. Although Drew, Drew isn't too sure. Now, there's a big fucking clue that it isn't Shane and Shana. There's a big fucking clue. It's the fact that they're clearly adults. Better than that. Not bad costumes, though. <sighs> Is that Shane and Shauna? I don't think so. You don't? Oh, scary <laughs> pumpkin heads. Speak <laughs> to us. <laughs> they're yeah, big, they're tall. The height of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. However, the costumes are cool. And the one thing I will praise mm. is the fact that, similar to the haunted mask, in that these masks. Their face moves, the mouse move, the pumpkin teeth move. And I'm like, okay, that's that's quite hard to do. Well done. Yeah, like they could have just put literally two pumpkins on someone's head and just had them in static. But no, they, they've made like a prop that yeah moves when they speak. And I think, yeah, I think they're really cool. And I really like their voices as well. Um, yeah, I think they sound really like cool and creepy. Yeah, the voices yeah. have a cool effect on them, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you like those as well, but there's a point in where one of them laughs, the one of the Jack O'Lantern people laugh, and I thought, again, that sounded very similar to the masked villain from, um, you know, the bloody uh, comic book one. Well, I, I, I wouldn't have noticed before. that, because I blanked out that um, attack. Yeah, but me. that laugh happens so much in that episode, it's so, like, annoying. Uh, I couldn't, like, forget it, and I thought it sounded very similar. I have to okay. look at the, vo the voice actors to see if that all... I wonder if, like, they reuse some of the same people or whatever. But, yeah. Very, very possible. Mm -hmm. the only thing I don't like about the look and I just don't get it is why they've got lobster claws all I kept thinking was Krabulon and they've got lobster claws man <laughs> don't know man they were in the prop room and they were like we need something and they just like <laughs> saw, someone saw some lobster claw gloves and they're like give them those <laughs> yeah why not it looks weird the pumpkin heads tell them to come with them to find out they, you come with us we'll show you a better neighbourhood to trick or treat and the kids are led through the woods idiots uh, yeah yeah i mean considering the whole situation it's like wow these kids yeah. are stupid. drew is not comfortable but they are led to a street that is basically deserted and picture christmas town from the nightmare before christmas but halloween version it's that it's costume quest it's super super decorated i'll give them credit 
they fucking went to town to make this look like a magical Halloween street. Yeah, I mean, I, they call it like a better place in the episode, and I just think it looks like so amazing. And I said, obviously, the kids were idiots, and they obviously do seem naive. You know, seeing the, the street all lit up with uh, all the Halloween decorations and each, each house is giving away stacks of candy and things like that. It's like a child's dream come true, you know. And as a young child, again, watching this, like, I would have, like, killed to have been those kids to like, experience that street. So I completely get, like, it makes complete sense how that could be super enticing to a child. You know? Yeah, it does make sense, absolutely. And as the trick and treating, as you said, the adults just give them piles and piles of candy. But for, for us, every time they walk away, we notice the adults are acting a bit strange. I, I was like, okay, maybe this is some sort of robotic thing, that kind of aspect. But no, shortly after, after we start to see these adult faces transform into pumpkins as well. One thing to know, I don't know if you noticed at all, but I think this is a really clever added detail. And the adults, they come to at each of the houses. You have to go back and check it. But they are the adults that you see in the newspaper clipping that have gone missing. They're the oh, ones wow. ser ser serving them at the houses. Yeah, because the guy, there's a guy they come to and he says that he's almost out of candy. And then he like obviously brings out stacks of it and gives it to them with his hands. And yeah, like he is one of the people from the newspaper that have gone missing. So I it ties back into that, that whole thing. See, man, great episode. <laughs> I mean, that is really clever. You're right. That is really clever. I really like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the kids are one, obviously wondering why they've never heard of this place, but, you know, they're still having fun. But it is getting late, so it's time to go. So they're sort of saying that we're going to go now. But the original pumpkin heads insist you can't leave. You must keep um, trick-or-treating. They even say, look, our bags are full, and one of the pumpkin heads picks up the bag, empties it, and is like, well, it's not anymore. Crack on. I did laugh yeah, at that. <laughs> I love, I love that idea though. Just that they have to like trick or treat for the rest of their lives to like the point of exhaustion. Like, yeah. I think that's. It also kind of like, it like um plays with the whole idea of maybe just being like overly greedy. Like, because they were like so desperate to get there, kids want to go out and like have, trick or treat, get as much candy as possible. So that whole like gluttony thing, right? So kind of like, oh, we'll have as much. I think they say like, have as much candy and you know as you can like handle, kind of thing like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, I would I would read up about this afterwards because something happens at the end of this that confused me. And basically, this detours uh, from an important element from the book, which is about uh, well, you know, we'll get to it at the end. I'll explain then when 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 that part's revealed. We're too tired. Our bags are full. We can't care anymore. Please let us go. No, it's empty. So yeah, being told they can't leave, Lee and Tabitha confront the pair, still believing them to be Shane and Shana. And Tabitha goes to take off, obviously, what she thinks is a mask, but ends up pulling off one of their heads. That's still able to talk and on the floor and stuff like that, telling they're going to trick or treat forever. So clearly it's not Shane and Shana in that regard. We even see one of them use like magic to sort of from his finger to blow up a pumpkin nearby. And the effect's okay. The effect, the effect's fine. Yeah. The kids are exhausted, but being forced to carry on. And Tabitha realised that these creatures are the ones responsible for the missing people. That's enough to now freak them out. So they try to run away, but are pursued through the woods. Of course, oh, like Goosebumps likes to do, it looks like they've gotten away, but immediately they, they're surrounded and trapped. Mm -hmm. We get this good effect, but one of the pumpkin's head kind of shoots fire out of yeah. the holes <laughs> in it. And it's a well, practical effect. Yeah, it looks oh, cool, oh. man. I didn't even, it was like they put some kind of like flimper in that pumpkin head's head and just like yeah it looked cool man it was it was it was and they declare that they're going to make Tabitha one of them by putting their heads on her she and Lee run off screaming as the pumpkins laugh and they then shrink down to reveal that they were Shane and Shauna Drew right because my natural thing is okay what the fuck and Drew is impressed but Walker's like well, how, how did you do all of that how were you able to do that rightfully so and they then reveal that they're aliens and that Drew is aware they're aliens and it's just a thing. You know, Walker's naturally flabbergasted, but it's like, oh, okay, that's just a thing, right? <laughs> yeah. You better 
get back. Nice meeting you, Walker. You too. Thing is, I was fine with this. I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. I like the idea that they're just aliens, but the nice aliens and, and Drew is friends with them, then that's it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is where I think this episode, like I said, at this point, I just wasn't that interested in what have happened. But I think this episode just goes fucking stupid here. It just makes no fucking sense. As yeah, I mean, it's a it is random as hell. But <laughs> I think, like, yeah. Well, Shane and Shana then remove that human faces to reveal that alien faces, which are basically green hand puppets like mm. that. Hated it. <laughs> yeah. They say they'll see them next year before getting in the ship. But then they then reveal to Drew that they eat humans and were responsible for the missing people and make a veiled threat to Drew that if she gets fat, like they like plump humans. So if you continue to eat candy and get fat, we might end up eating you. And I'm like, and like Drew looks a bit concerned and worried. And I'm like, what the fuck? We've just yeah. gone like that. Why have we just flipped down a dime? That's so fucking weird. They disappear and that's the end of the episode. Mm, yeah, they didn't really need to add that in, I don't think. Well, detail. well, in the book, these aliens specifically mm. target overweight people, plump and fat human Ooh. beings. Hence the reason why they want you to eat candy. So it is like some exactly. kind of thing about gluttony and how that's like sinful or something. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's interesting. But the episode omitted every aspect of that up until the end for some random reason. Mm. Maybe they could have had like the four people that were missing were like like larger people, you know. And that would have yep. been like that would have been like the tie-in. Yeah, I do think like I said, the ending is like random as hell. But I think it cap it like just caps off what is a super memorable episode. Like it's memorable for maybe its randomness. And like I think it's up there as one of the best, man. <laughs> I just like I love because I just think I just love the the pure like they really just go for it with the Halloween setting. You know, I think it looks great. And uh, yeah, I just I love the whole co the concept of it. So it's a really simplistic idea. Some of the other episodes they go too like too far with like the twists and turns and stuff. This is quite like a basic, like almost grounded in reality type thing at first, with like the kids being afraid of being kidnapped. Like that's like a real a real fear of something that could happen in real life, you know. And then obviously it goes like with the whole horror element, but yeah, you don't really know what's going on. And then yeah, the ending with the aliens and stuff that's a bit like silly. I don't think that's necessary, but yeah. So there'll be some debate when we come to doing the, the tier ranking of this one, I think. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna season two's tier ranking is gonna be messy because it also includes Attack of the Mutant. And obviously I, I'm gonna want to put that in the worst, whereas you're gonna want to put it in the fucking best. <laughs> so I'm gonna find well, some I mean, way of doing common ground. Yeah, I, th I well I think this I think this is this is better than Attack of the Mutant. So really? yeah, I would say so. Well, here's the thing, right? I'll, I'll agree with you on that purely because this is one episode not split over two. The thing is, I get what you're saying. I get the, the idea that the visual quality and the sort of sets and things they've done is what stands out in this episode. The problem is, is that's nothing special beyond, oh, that's nice to see in Goosebumps, purely because of what we've been doing. As a story, I just don't... It's simply down to the same bollocks I've seen before, which at first is Halloween, trick-or-treating, people being scared, let's get revenge. Then what it does, it implies we're going to get something really, really cool and dark, and then goes, nah, fuck all that. We're going to have double twists where it is Shane and Shana after all of that, but also now they're aliens. And it's yeah. like, mm -hmm. fuck, I don't like that. It was interesting that after the previous episode, which was Ghost Beach, we had two kids who eventually turned out to be ghosts who were good. You get two kids in this who turn out to be aliens who are good aliens. Yeah. <laughs> so like repeating, repeating it slightly. Obviously, they completely randomly like the books and stuff that's like, Clearly not how it was written or anything, but in the way they lined up the series, maybe they could have like not put them one after the other. But yeah, that's I why. Go, I agree with what you're saying, particularly although this isn't for this video, it's for the next one. The fact that what will follow this has a very mm -hmm. similar kind of beats in regards to location and time of the year as this. Yeah, that's you're true. right. Like bad mm -hmm. placement. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's true. Kind of sandwiched in between two very similar episodes. Yeah. The thing is, I don't hate this episode. There's nothing for me to hate about it. I think the acting is solid. I think a lot of the visuals are good. At times, they wow me and make me go, oh, that's really nice to see. I'm glad you did that. Simply put, as a story, there's nothing that hooked me at all. By the end of it, I was like, oh, I'm glad that's over with. It's That's it. That's what it is for me. Yeah, I think also because, like, the episodes that come before this one, they've got the Garden Gnomes one. That obviously, it was a bit of a low point. And then the ghost beach one, it's a bit hand miss. And I, I thought this took it back to like a higher level. 
that's just my opinion. <laughs> well, for, so for me, it just carried on at that same pace where I'm like, where's the stuff that I really like? Oh, that was great. Just wasn't this. But again, I don't hate it. Cool. Who do you agree with? Do you agree with Liam? Do you agree with me? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?